Let's talk about humidifying your instruments. A few weeks back, a friend had some questions and I, you know, I thought it'd be a great idea just to put this in a quick condensed video for anyone that had questions on this subject. Uh, so first off, should you humidify your instruments? Absolutely, unless you live in a naturally humid environment, it's warm all year round. Um, but if you live anywhere that it gets cold, you have to heat your house, which is gonna dry it out, or especially the places where it's already naturally dry, like the middle of large continental areas. Uh, you definitely want to humidify your instruments. A few of the dangers of not humidifying, number one is that the thin tops on acoustic instruments can actually crack. Unfortunately, a few years ago, this was the first year that my wife and I had moved into this house after buying it. I didn't realize how dry it got in here. And one day I picked up my D28 and it just had a thin hairline crack in it. Didn't really realize what had caused it. So like two weeks later, we're sitting on the couch and I hear a bang from the music room, which was originally the dining room in this house and I came over and the bridge had popped off my classical. So wood can crack, glue can come undone on bridges. I've seen it on bindings of guitars as well. Uh, and additionally, especially on electrics, now electrics are usually fine if you don't humidify them. I definitely recommend humidifying all instruments, but if you don't humidify your electrics, you're probably gonna be fine, aside from the fact that you'll feel a little bit of fret sprout. So what happens is the wood contracts a little bit when it gets dry, the metal doesn't change at all, and so the ends of the frets you can actually feel them on the edge of the, uh, the, the neck as you go up and down. The ideal humidity level that you should look for is usually between 45 and 55%. Uh, sometimes that's hard to maintain, especially when it gets really cold. Like back in December, we had that cold storm that came through, the entire United States was affected. Um, and it got down to negative six here before the wind chill. My humidifier in the room really had a hard time keeping up with it. So I transferred some of my acoustic instruments to their cases, which also had little humidifiers in there. Uh, and that got me through the week or so that it was really cold. But other than that, I keep this room, which is about a 12 by 12 room, 12 feet, uh, just humidified with a single floor unit, which I'll talk about a little bit in this video. I personally prefer to keep all my instruments out in the room accessible. Um, I just don't want anything in between me and picking up the instrument. I just want it to be as quick as possible. If I see the instrument, I'm probably more likely to play it if it's hiding in a case, uh, the way I work, same with the food in my fridge. If I don't see it, I forget it exists. So um, that just helps me practice the guitar more often, just keeping it out. So this is the humidifier that I use in my room. It's made by Lavoie. I'm sure there's a lot of other brands that produce basically the same product. Um, it was relatively cheap and it works well for what I needed to do. So this is what I've been using the last few years. I'm just gonna run through a few of the features that I think are useful on this thing. Um, so the tank, I think, is between one and one and a half gallons, and it's got basically three different mist settings. Uh, so if it's, you know, in the winter, if it's above freezing, one is usually fine, and the, the tank's gonna last for about a day and a half. On the medium setting, that's, if it's like 30 degrees outside and I wanna keep my room, my house at like 67, 69 degrees or so, Fahrenheit, I'll put it on that second setting and the tank will empty in maybe a day or so. The third setting puts out a lot of humidity and the tank's gonna empty in just a few hours, but if it's super cold out, I'll run it on the max setting and I'll turn the ceiling fan on so that the carpet doesn't get wet. Um, I'd imagine a box fan or just a floor fan in general would help um, because otherwise on that max setting, the, the floor is gonna get a little bit wet just sitting right where it is. Um, so let's turn that back to where I had it. It also has a warming function which helps disperse the humidity a little bit faster than cool humidity. I don't really use that unless it's super cold outside, like I said. Now, this also has a hydrometer in it, and theoretically, the idea behind this was that uh, it should be able to sense what the humidity is in the room and automatically turn itself on and off as needed. The design of having the hydrometer in the unit that's actually providing humidity is flawed because it's gonna be more humid around this thing than it is on the other side of the room, so I can't use that at all. It just doesn't work. Um, basically what you would do, theoretically, is set the humidity to 55%, right? The unit thinks it's actually at 90 right now, so it's going to shut off in a second. Uh, I can tell you it's definitely not at 90% humidity, or even 55 for that matter. Um, and I'll show you what you should have in just a second. It's my cat Velma. So I'm going to turn that humidity function back off. I just run it all the time, and if it gets a little bit too humid in the room, if it's warm outside, I'll turn it off for an hour or two and open the doors to the rest of my house. 
to help uh, equalize the humidity. So I don't use that humidity function at all. It does have a timer and it has an auto on and off. You can set the, uh, the time of day that you want it to turn on. So that's how I keep my room humidified. Like I said, you want to make sure you're kind of in a smaller to medium sized room. This is about 150 square feet. Uh, and you definitely want a way that you can close it off from the rest of the house. So I had these doors put on uh, over the summer. That goes to the living room and the kitchen. Uh, additionally, you're definitely going to want a hydrometer that you can place across the room to actually let you know what the humidity is because the reading on the humidifier is not accurate. So this was made by ThermPro. Uh, I think it was like 12 on Amazon and I haven't even had to change the batteries yet. It's just stuck to my wall with Velcro for the day that I have to take it off and switch it out. So that's saying it's 47% humidity in here. Little dude has a smiley face on so he's happy. Uh, the temperature and then the high and the low for humidity and temperature as well, which probably happened when I was on a trip. Uh, and not home. So the first thing I want to mention here, and this is uh, my viola case, just because I just got back from rehearsal, but um, you can use these with guitars, obviously, and I, I do. I have about seven or eight of these that I keep in each case. This is just an in-case humidifier. Uh, it's very simple. You fill it up with water. It recommends distilled, uh, but I always just use tap water, and it works fine. And it's it's, it's made to keep it at the appropriate humidity. And you can actually see here in my case, it's got a hydrometer built in. It's a really nice case. So this is telling me that it's sitting around 50%. You basically want to aim for like 40 to 60. So right there, right in the middle of the range, it's perfect. I use these uh, in my cases when I go out to a gig. Um, just, you know, in the car, on the way there, on the way back. One of the dangerous things with humidity is that not only can a dry environment damage an instrument, but also just sudden changes. So if you are humidifying your instruments, you definitely want to make sure that when you're taking it somewhere, um, it's humidified on the trip there and back. You know, if the venue you go into isn't humidified, that's okay. It's only going to be out of the case for a few hours. But anything more than that, you definitely want to keep it humidified in the case. This is the case for my live acoustic that I use, my Eastman E20. Uh, and this is exactly the same product. You can see it's shriveled up because it doesn't have water in it. I haven't gigged on that instrument in a week or two. So if it's not staying in the case, there's no need to use that stuff. But I just wanted to show this because they also come with this attachment that the other one didn't have because it's not a guitar, so I didn't need it. This just allows it to sit inside the guitar. You place it through the strings, through the GND string, and it just hangs inside the body of the guitar. And so that just really helps concentrate the humidity on the inside of the body of the instrument, which is important. As I was editing this video, I realized I wanted to mention one of the most popular uh, humidifying designs for instrument cases that's out there. This is the Daddario Humidipack system. Uh, so they are disposable, which gets a little bit expensive if you have a lot of instrument cases you want to keep humidified. But if you only have one or two, I think this is one of the best ways because it's just, you don't have to think about it. It lasts a really long time. Basically what you do is you buy these little packs. They sit in the case. They actually work both ways. So for instance, in the summer here in Pennsylvania, it tends to get really humid. It'll actually take some of the humidity out of the case and help maintain that perfect 45 to 55% range that we like to see for acoustic instruments. In the winter, when it's drawing humidity out of the humidipack and dispersing it within the case, uh, once the humidipack starts to get towards the end of its life, it'll actually become hard. But what you can do, and though Dodario specifically prints on the packaging, it's not safe to do this, I'm not sure why, probably because they want to sell more. Uh, just take the humidipack and I throw it in like a Tupperware container with a wet sponge. Over the course of a few hours, the humidipack will actually take on the moisture from that sponge uh, and you can reuse it. So just another option to think about uh, if you want to go with the instrument case route. This is my acoustic travel case, uh, you know, soft shell backpack style. And this is what I use for my D28 and also my arch top jazz guitar, my Eastman. So those are very important guitars to keep humidified. For this, I got a Music Nomad humidifier and I actually uh, sewed it to the side of the case since it's soft shell. Basically, it's just a very high density sponge. It holds an incredible amount of water for how big this thing is. And in the driest part of the year, it'll last about a week. So I just run that underwater when I need to go out with one of those instruments. So that's how I humidify my instruments. That Lavoie humidifier works great. I've been using it the last few years. There's gonna be a link in the description. Uh, there's a small commission that I'll get if you purchase through that link that just goes to help fund the channel and these videos. The only thing I would have to say is if you get a room humidifier like that, you just have to remember to descale it every now and then. 
if you're using tap water, basically any water that has a little bit of calcium in it, that calcium is going to build up. Uh, and what you do to dissolve it is just make uh, an acidic solution. So take like white vinegar and water. I usually fill up the tank halfway, just 50-50. And I run that through in the garage when it's warm out. I'll do that when I take the humidifier out for the first time. Usually at some point during the winter, you know, on a, a warm day or something, I'll put it in the garage and let it run. Uh, and then at the end of the season, before I put it away in about March or so, I'll run it through again. So that's all I have to say. Uh, I'll put the instrument case humidifiers in the description as well if you want to check those out. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.